avoidance is one of the most powerful human self-protective strategies. And so many of us do it in very many subtle ways, and some of our kids do it in very dramatic ways. In fact, it may even be in aggression as avoidance, self-harm as avoidance. And so it is about creating enough safety so that the strategy is no longer needed. It's kind of like I let go of the strategy rather than you have to train me to stop doing it. That, that's a tricky one to appreciate because in a differently wired brain, you, that may take time. So often we think, okay, you're doing this thing and it's, it's threatening your survival and yet your brain thinks it's keeping you in survival. I need to in, find all the ways that I can think of in my clinical reasoning to help you feel safe in your body that may have nothing to do with the behavior itself or the self-protective strategy. And that can typically come in the form of co-regulation. It can come in the form of sensory, and sometimes it comes in the form of cognition. One of the most important aspects is how we feel in the presence of avoidance. Our own relationship to avoidance is a very key aspect of what the brain of the child is monitoring when they're with us. So if I feel rejected by a kid, their brain is going to feel that. If I'm working harder to create connection and they're avoidant, their brain is going to feel that. And that's going to increase the danger. So I really have to know myself and my own style, both in relationship and within task and context, to be as present as I can. And sometimes the movement towards lack of avoidance is in the body, not in the completion of the task. It may look like I look at something, I orient my body, I lean my ear towards something. Those are the beginnings of acceptance of something. 